Um, tonight, I want to tell you about the most exciting experiment of my life. Uh, I was at Caltech working with some amazing people. After months of hard work, we had come up with a hypothesis about an important part of our innate immune system, so basically how our body fights off infection. Um, we didn't know exactly how it worked, but my hunch was that this particular experiment would prove or disprove our hypothesis and uh, probably give us some further insight. Just to give you the, the idea of it, the experiment took weeks to prepare. Uh, I had to master several techniques, many of which uh, I didn't tell Sarah about because they're dangerous. They involve radiation, toxins, uh, carcinogens, all of these things which had to be handled with the utmost care and precision. And so on the actual day, I woke up early, pretty much worked all day, cleaning and preparing this apparatus, mixing, pouring, measuring carefully, and in miniature. So my training has taught me to be able to tell the difference between one and one and a half, one millionths of a liter. And I was using all of that training, everything that I had, putting that together, to try and make this experiment really work and give us a clear, clean result. So, uh, end of the day, late at night, uh, the experiment had to incubate until the next morning. So I came home, and again, something that, that people are used to in my house when an experiment is on the line, I came home completely worthless. <laughs> Couldn't think about anything else, lost in space all day, went to bed, and in this case, I just couldn't concentrate at all. I couldn't sleep. I was just too excited about it. At 4.30 in the morning, I just decided, you know what, I've waited long enough, got out of bed, put on a jacket, sped back to school, fussed with the door, tried to get the last little things I needed, ran up the stairs, worked on the last half hour of that protocol, and when that was finally finished, I got a chance to take my first look at the results. There it was, right in front of me. And as soon as I saw it, I had to catch my breath. It was clear as day, completely, well, just gorgeous. And that morning, I knew something that no one in the world knew and that I knew a lot of people wanted to know. Something that gave people just this tiny little sliver of insight into how our bodies work. And what's amazing to me is that my first instinct in that moment was to pray. And that's what I did. It was something like, Dear Father, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That was completely awesome <laughs> and amazing. Thank you so much. My fellow um, early morning lab mates were on their way. Our lab and many of the great labs across the world are pretty much like a, a nerdy version of Las Vegas. They never sleep. Uh, but for one beautiful half hour, um, I was there, alone with my thoughts, feeling just an incredible combination of joy, insight, gratitude, relief, and devotion. And in many ways, this was the highlight of my scientific career. Um, it literally brought me over here, which has just been a thrill. So we have a famous story that you'll all be familiar with about a priest who hungered for knowledge and who thought that the best way to find out the truth of something was to plant seeds. He took those seeds and he laid them carefully in the ground, digging around them, nourishing the soil, and watching those seeds begin to sprout and grow, protecting the fruit, waiting patiently for it, which he then collected and tested carefully to see if his faith was well-placed. And it was. The fruit was perfect. 
It gave him incontrovertible evidence and filled him with new knowledge and happiness. That priest was Gregor Mendel, the father of genetics. He planted those seeds, literal seeds, from the plant called sweet pea, like my daughter, to determine the basis of heredity, why blue-eyed parents have blue-eyed children, and how the Habsburgs got their famous lips. By carefully raising plants and employing a clever method of cross-pollination, he was able to show that every pea plant had two building blocks necessary to create a particular trait in a person, and that one block was passed from each parent plant to its offspring. Now we know that plants, platypods, and people have these same building blocks, and today we call them genes. But I hope that you saw that the history of Gregor Mendel bears an astonishing resemblance to our own scripture. In particular, when it comes to matters of faith, an ancient prophet taught us to perform an experiment. To give place that a seed may be planted in our hearts, and if it be a true seed or a good seed, it will begin to swell within us. And as the seed swelleth and sprouteth and beginneth to grow, then we have to say that the seed is good, based on the evidence. For behold, it swelleth and sprouteth and beginneth to grow. And now, behold, because you have tried the experiment and planted the seed, and it swelleth and sprouteth and beginneth to grow, ye must needs know that the seed is good. Similarly, the Savior Jesus Christ said, if anyone will do God's will, he will find out whether it comes from God. In other words, Jesus asks us to experiment, to try it out. In my career, I've learned that a good experiment, a really fabulous, clear, perfect experiment, requires months and years of hard work, work of the mind and work of the body. It requires the utmost precision and care to avoid danger and to make sure that the results will be clear. It requires determination and patience. It's foolish to think that a single experiment, even the best, the most carefully planned and executed experiment, will tell you everything about how the brain works or whether there's life on other planets. But I have come to treasure the beautiful slivers of light that the best experiments can provide. And now, as promised, I'll tell you about the most exciting experiment of my life. In fact, that experiment is my life. I've put more thought and care into this search for truth than any other, personal or professional. I can't tell you that I've discovered everything that I want to know about our purpose on this earth any more than I, can, than I know about how viruses interact with the immune system or how cells manage to behave so individually. But when I try to do my best to do God's will, I know, I know that it is the truest, most honest, and most beautiful expression I can make of my life. One of these days, hopefully many years from now, <laughs> I won't be able to sleep. I'll wake up and I'll be off to where I don't know. But that day I'll finish the protocol. I'll finally get to see the full result. And I have a hunch and I honestly hope with all my heart that the result will be gorgeous. That it will take my breath away. That I'll finally know that one thing that everyone in the world wants to know, and that my instinct at that moment will be to pray, Dear Father, wow, that was amazing. And thank you so much. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.